Welcome back once again, all of my low carb friends. And for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. One of the top muffins aside from blueberry muffins is probably banana muffins. Of course, you'd think being on a keto diet, there's no way you can have banana muffins because bananas are a big no-no, right? Wrong. Today, I'm going to show you how to make mock banana muffins that give you this taste as banana muffins without all the carbs and sugars. And if you want a printable version of this, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find a printable version of these recipes and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and help support the channel. So while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. In a large mixing bowl, combine 120 grams or about one cup of coconut flour, 49 grams or one fourth cup of the granulated sweetener of your choice. I'm using granulated monk fruit sweetener. You can use whatever granulated sweetener you want. You can also use more or less depending on how sweet you want your muffins. One fourth teaspoon of salt. This is optional. I just like to throw it in for extra flavor. And one tablespoon of baking powder. Sift or whisk these all together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add three large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature so that they mix in more smooth. Stir the eggs into the dry ingredients until everything is fully combined and all the dry ingredients have been moistened. Add a half cup of melted butter or oil of your choice. Mix the oil in until everything is fully combined. Add four ounces or a half cup of room temperature milk of your choice. Again, make sure this is room temperature. That way you have a more smooth dough, which makes for a fluffier muffin. Also, if you want a more creamy texture, that's really more the traditional texture of a banana muffin, you can use plain yogurt or sour cream instead of the milk. That's just up to you as to how creamy you want your muffins to be. Add a half teaspoon of vanilla extract and one tablespoon of banana extract, more or less depending on how much of a banana flavor you want in your muffins. Stir everything all together until everything is fully combined and you have a moist dough. Yes, this is going to be more the texture of dough than batter. I know traditionally muffins are more of a batter. In this case, using coconut flour, you will have more of a dough texture. Once everything is fully combined, form the dough into a ball and just kind of roll it around in your bowl just a little bit. This is just to make sure the texture, you want to make sure that your dough is nice and moist. It shouldn't be sticky filling, but it should be nice and moist. If you want to, you can gradually fold in about 37 grams or a fourth cup of the chopped nuts of your choice. This is up to you whether you like nuts in your muffins or not. You can also do a fourth cup of chocolate chips. If you like chocolate chips in your muffin, whatever add-ins you want, you can gradually fold those in. You can also, if you like, add some cinnamon or some different spices. It's up to you. You can get nice and creative with this. However you want your banana muffins to taste, go for it. Lightly spray nine silicone muffin cups, or if you're using a traditional muffin tin, then you can either lightly spray nine muffin cups in the tin or line them with paper liners. I don't like using paper liners in this particular recipe because sometimes the paper liners don't cooperate the best with coconut flour because coconut flour is so moist. So just a heads up about that. You can use paper liners, but there is a possibility that it will get stuck and tear your muffin apart. Spoon the dough about three tablespoons into each muffin cup. This makes about nine muffins altogether. Once the dough is evenly divided, take each dough mound that's in the individual muffin cups. Roll the dough mound into a tight, smooth ball. 
then press it down flat so it's evenly distributed throughout each one of the muffin cups. If you need to, you can use a knife a little bit to make sure that the top is smooth. You want a nice even cook, so you want to make sure these are evenly pressed. Once your muffins are all shaped, place them into your preheated oven. Bake at 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes or until very lightly golden around the edges and a tester comes out clean. For me, 20 minutes was perfect. Everyone's oven is different, so check at that 20 minute mark. If the tester comes out clean, then it is done. Once your muffins are done baking, remove them from the oven. Allow them to cool in the pan for at least 15 minutes. That way they firm up. Gluten-free baked goods, when you remove them from the oven, tend to be very soft. So you do want to make sure that these cool in the pan for at least 15 minutes or until they're firm enough to remove from the pans without them falling apart. Once they've cooled for about 15-20 minutes, carefully remove them from the muffin cups. If you have a silicone pan like I do, they pop right out. Otherwise, you might need to use a butter knife and loosen the edges a little bit. Then transfer them to a wire rack. You can eat these warm if you want to or allow them to cool completely. If you do have any leftovers, place them in an airtight container and store them at room temperature for up to three days. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking. In a small mug, melt two tablespoons of butter. Make sure it is fully and completely melted. You want this liquefied. And set that aside once it's all melted. In a separate small bowl, whisk together one fourth cup of monk fruit sweetener or granulated sweetener of your choice. One teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Whisk the cinnamon and sweetener all together until it's fully combined. Make sure the cinnamon gets fully distributed in the monk fruit sweetener. Once the cinnamon and sweetener have been combined, brush the top of the muffin with the melted butter. Get a decent amount of butter on it. You don't want to drench it, but you want a decent amount on there so it can be nice and moist. After you've brushed the top with the butter, then dip the top of the muffin gently into the cinnamon sweetener mixture. Make sure you completely coat the top with the cinnamon topping. Repeat this until all of the muffins have been topped with the cinnamon topping. If you have any extra topping, then you could just sprinkle it across the tops of them until it's evenly distributed on the muffin tops. Or you can put it in an airtight container and save it until you're ready to use it for another time. 